And now, The Ice Cold of Fear, a true story from not so very long ago. Budapest, 1974. Autumn was passing into winter and the cold was increasing each day. But in the hearts of two very young people was the heat of excitement. Catalin and Ferry were getting ready to flee. Their native Hungary had become too small for their dreams and they needed more. They needed freedom. But legally leaving the East was no easy thing. Permission was needed. But how? The answer was relatively simple. Having just completed their medical studies, a trip to Leningrad was nothing unusual. Many students did it. And to this end, Katalin and Ferry had joined the Hungarian Communist Youth Organization KISS, K-I-S. And because Katalin and Ferry were two party members, the Ministry of the Interior had automatically approved their application for travel to Leningrad and a two-day trip to Helsinki. A ministry stamp on their already KISS-approved application forms had been nothing more than a matter of form. If KISS says yes, then everyone else says yes as well. But there was something that neither KISS nor the Ministry of the Interior had known. KISS had only approved a journey to Leningrad. By using a very special pen, Katalin had carefully added the trip to Helsinki herself. A dangerous thing to do, and it, if discovered, would have meant life behind bars for Katalin and Ferry. And there was one other risk too, a top secret. Katalin and Ferry had two essential documents to take with them, and these were their future success. These were their medical diplomas. But how to hide them in their luggage? Catalin decided the best way of doing so was by sewing them into the lining of one of their cases. And that's what she did. And this painstaking work was hard and took a very long time. The stitching had to be real and old and perfect as well. And this was the hardest of all. And the test was not long in coming. At the airport, everyone's cases were being thoroughly controlled. And to Catalin's dismay, the entire lining had just been ripped out of the woman's case who was in front of them at the check. This too could happen to them. And sure enough, their luggage too was thoroughly searched. But Catalin's stitching stood up to the test. Catalin and Ferry were through. And they and the rest of the group took their seats on the afternoon flight to the north. Leningrad was waiting for them. And despite being constantly followed in Leningrad, Catalin and Ferry enjoyed every moment. Soon, communism would be a thing of their pasts. The West was just hours away. And then came the next test, their short stay in Helsinki. But what to do with their luggage? They were being carefully watched. Two big cases for just one night in Helsinki? Definitely suspicious. They had to go down to essentials. Catalin kept a cool head. She'd had an idea. As scheduled, Catalin and Ferry joined the rest of the group going to Helsinki in the hotel lobby. And all they had with them was just one plastic bag, enough for a very short visit. And then, just as the group was leaving, Catalin's and Ferry's plastic bag broke and their belongings fell to the ground. Quickly, Catalin fetched one of their empty cases and, in front of the group, put in their belongings. 
perfect for shopping, she grinned. Thirty minutes later, their train pulled out of the station, and Catalin and Ferry didn't look back. Leningrad and the East were now firmly behind them, and all had been so very easy. Helsinki and Freedom were now very close. Catalin and Ferry closed their eyes and relaxed to the rhythm of the tracks. Catalin slept. But then, with the border in sight, the train suddenly stopped with a jolt and a screech. Catalin and Ferry woke up. Border guards and dogs were waiting to board. The Russians were leaving nothing to chance. And once again came the feeling of freezing cold fear. And as the guards and their dogs made their way through the train, it became obviously clear that this time things were going to be hard. But once again they were lucky. And once again it was the people before them that got all the attention. And then, having controlled and searched the entire train, the guards and their dogs disappeared. The train would soon be moving again. Finland was now very close. They could see it quite clearly. Soon they would touch it as well. But soon took longer to come than expected. Nothing happened. The train just stood there and waited. The train didn't move. Ten minutes passed, an hour went by, two hours went by. What was happening? Nobody knew and nobody dared ask. The risk was too great. Freedom was just down the road, but would they ever get there? Everyone was nervous. And then, with a jolt, and then another jolt, the train started moving, slowly at first, then faster and faster. But still the silence remained. No one believed they were moving. And then, all of a sudden, they saw Finnish plates on the cars. They had gone over the line and passed into freedom. They had arrived. And then the cheering broke out and the rest was relatively easy. Catalin and Ferry waited until the group was about to leave for Leningrad before taking their leave. Catalin and Ferry simply slid away from the group and walked round the corner. And then, just to make sure, Catalin and Ferry hid in the park. Then after dark, Catalin and Ferry made their way to the port and then to Sweden by ship, and there they stayed for almost a year. And Catalin and Ferry did everything from cleaning toilets to serving in restaurants. There was nothing below them. They had to survive. And then they moved on. Both became dentists, and Catalin became a celebrated artist as well. And hungry? Now living in Vienna, Hungary has become part of Catalin and Ferry's everyday life once again. A family is family, and the ice-cold fear is a thing of the past. Now is the future they dreamed of. Escaping was then. Now they are home. Catalin and Ferry came out of the cold and into the west, and then back again to the east. Catalin and Ferry, they took the risk and succeeded. And then the cheering broke out.